For 8,000 years of recorded time, man toiled endlessly in field and forest, harvesting the fruits of the earth for his primitive needs, food, clothing, shelter. Then, within the span of a single lifetime, he took a giant step forward. Through science, he achieved abundance. Now, through the magic of creative chemistry, man stands at the threshold of a challenging new era, an era in which the bounties of nature can be transformed into raw materials for industry to satisfy other, more sophisticated human needs. The vehicle, science. Basic and applied chemistry altering the fruits of the earth to benefit mankind. Chemists extracting basic chemicals from agriculture, searching out their hidden potential, modifying molecular structures. Microbiologists probing deep into the hidden, unexplored world that lies beneath powerful new microscopes. Chemical engineers pushing through to new horizons, new space age achievements. In this, the most dynamic era in the history of man. Many of these scientists have found the open door to challenging careers at one of the four great regional labs of the Agricultural Research Service of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Dedicated to exploring and utilizing the wonders of agriculture through chemistry. Science begins with scientists. This is a cradle of science. These are some of the dedicated young scientists who will help create the world of tomorrow. Change the face of our planet. Journey to a distant star. Add to the pool of basic research the sum total of human knowledge. Study a purified new compound that has never before been known. Give industry new raw materials to enrich our lives. Raw materials derived from the wonders with which nature has endowed us. Are you one of these undergraduates? Are you a graduate student? Have you considered how you will journey from this campus to your future? Do you know about the attractive ARS summer trainee program? If your field is chemistry, biochemistry, chemical engineering, have you considered the advantages of a career with the Agricultural Research Service of the U.S. Department of Agriculture? This talented physical chemist did. Today he works in an ideal research climate that offers him full opportunity to grow professionally in his chosen field. He's exploring unknown frontiers of science at an agricultural research service lab. His associates, leaders of recognized scientific reputation in his field. The magic of basic and applied research is demonstrated every day at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Here's an example. 
organic chemists explore the unknown and create a polyfoam plastic made of resins derived from castor oil. Today, the relatively new field of organic chemistry has broadened our horizons, and the bounty of nature is packaged into plastics, fibers, and chemicals. And this is only the beginning. For everything in nature, of course, is made up of a precise number of atoms forming molecules and arranged in a definite geometric pattern. By adding, subtracting, or rearranging atoms of chemical elements, molecular structures can be formed in an almost infinite variety of ways to form other compounds. One way to modify or transform an agricultural product is to aggregate molecules into polymers polymerization. Consider just one single team of basic research scientists at ARS. Not content with what could be produced from ordinary cornstarch, they decided to find new uses for it by modifying its chemical structure. Scientists isolated the components of corn, determined their basic elements, their molecular composition. Sacks of corn were shipped from farm to the team at the ARS laboratory. The corn was ground, the starch extracted, and then dried. From this raw whole starch, a slurry was made and treated with pyriodate. As the starch was oxidized, the pyriodate was electrolytically regenerated. Result, an inexpensive process for the creation of an entirely new substance, dialdehyde starch, a product of creative chemistry. In another ARS lab, scientists discovered that aldehyde groups of the newly created substance, dialdehyde starch, reacted favorably with amino groups found in the protein of animal hides. Used for tanning leathers, it reduces processing time from six weeks to six days. And it offers other practical advantages too. Torture tests were made. Samples were prepared and heated in water until the shrinkage temperature was determined. Look at this process in operation. It proves conclusively that tanning with dialdehyde starch prevents shrinkage and swelling of the leather, a boon to industry and the consumer. And now the utilization story goes one step further. ARS chemical engineers set up miniature factories to test for other industrial uses of new products like dialdehyde starch. This laboratory machine is reproducing the complete operation of a paper-making machine Experiments prove that when the dialdehyde starch is added to wood pulp mixtures, the paper takes on new properties. It gains strength to resist disintegration by water. Wet paper not treated with dialdehyde starch breaks easily. Translation to the consumer, sneeze-proof tissues, wet strength napkins. The story still isn't concluded. Dialdehyde starch is in commercial use today. But creative ARS chemical engineers continue to work on the problem of reducing manufacturing costs. For agricultural products must compete, cost-wise, with those derived from coal and petroleum. And so, chemists and engineers at ARS continue to probe, experiment, explore the unknown potential of dialdehyde starch. An entirely new substance, created by man, product of creative chemistry. Transforming an agricultural commodity into an entirely new product is often dramatic and rewarding. Consider animal fats, for example. Up to a decade or two ago, most animal fats went into the making of soap. But the rise of detergents changed the picture. How does the ARS scientist tackle the challenge of utilizing excess animal fats? First, by studying the components. 
Minute samples, microliters a millionth of an ounce in volume, are analyzed. As the needle wanders across the chart, the gas chromatograph records the amount of each fatty acid in a mixture. From accurate information like this, research chemists modify the acids and synthesize new compounds such as vinyl stearate plastics and plasticizers. Through exploration, development, exploitation, animal fats are now transformed into a valuable base for raincoats and hoods. Shower curtains. Sturdy garden hoses. The same challenge to creative scientists at ARS is posed by billions of pounds of oil-bearing seeds. How is this problem handled? The properties of these organic materials are changed by adding atoms or rearranging the natural patterns. Like this. By adding hydrogen to the double bonds of an unsaturated oil, a saturated solid fat can be produced for use in shortenings or margarine. Fiber presents many problems. Today it's refashioned to help cotton farmers meet the competition of synthetics. To alter the characteristics of nature's original properties, ARS scientists first probe deeply into the single fiber of cotton. It's examined with an ordinary microscope. and enlarged up to 40,000 times by electron microscopy. Chemical treatment of cotton paved the way for wash and wear. But there's still more to be done. And today, other chemicals are being developed to make cotton fabric more resistant to flame, water, and mildew. Chemicals like tris azeridinyl phosphine oxide, APO for short. Wool, too, is also carefully explored. Studies of nuclear magnetic resonance help show how water is absorbed. By interfacial polymerization, the magic of chemistry is now making wool shrink resistant and crease proof. Agricultural research benefits all of us. It discovers new markets for the farmer, new and improved materials for industry, and provides new end products for everyone. All four of the great ARS regional laboratories contain pioneering research groups. These labs offer an outstanding research climate for career scientists interested in basic and applied research. This young career scientist pursues his work in microbiological chemistry, a specialist in his selected field. He works with consultants from leading universities, industry, and other federal research labs. And his research results are promptly published in leading scientific journals. New and useful knowledge reaches industry quickly, and industrial scientists turn USDA discoveries into commercial realities like the search for a simple and effective method for maintaining bacteriophage-free lactic starters in the manufacture of cheese and cultured milk products, or stabilizing the flavor and texture of cheese. Problems like these, and many others, are constantly initiated and solved at the U.S. Department of Agriculture. From cheese to life-saving medical supplies, a bridge that has been crossed by creative agricultural biochemists dedicated to utilizing the fruits of nature 
for the good of all mankind. Yes, the dextrose that is fed intravenously to patients who can't tolerate a normal diet is made from corn. And dextran, the blood plasma extender, is a polymer of dextrose, produced by fermenting sugar from cane or beets into a bacterial gum. In case of national emergency, medical science now possesses an easily produced, inexpensive blood plasma extender, a synthetic substance for use in transfusions. Because it's abundant and inexpensive, this chemical dextran derived from the farm serves the petroleum industry equally as well. It is used to thicken the drilling mud needed for easier extraction of crude oil from the earth. Agricultural Research Service offers creative scientists broad and rewarding assignments, for the problems and potential of nature are endless and renewable. Challenges like this. Raw, whole starch from corn still holds many secrets. Scientists continue to probe, explore, learn more and more about them. For example, a spectrophotometer shows there are two distinct kinds of starch, amylose and amylopectin. Iodine reacts with amylose, the linear form, to make a blue compound. The branched form is amylopectin. What are the hidden potentials for mankind? Here are some experiments on making sheet film from amylose. Today, it is a sheet film. What will science and industry make of it tomorrow? An edible packaging material for food, so you can eat your cake and its wrapper too? What other valuable potential does this sheet film contain? Here are two other fascinating projects in which ARS scientists are involved. The first, cheese starter cultures, bred by new genetic combinations of microorganisms. And the second, dehydrated whole milk. Powdered skim milk is available almost everywhere. But flavor and stability still pose problems in powdered whole milk. When will the breakthrough come? Next, consider the fractionation of wheat gluten. We're now achieving dramatic results in the fractionation of the individual proteins. But so far, no one has been able to combine or modify them for practical application. What creative chemist will come up with the fresh, freewheeling approach for their utilization? Here's a challenge old as time, new as tomorrow, preserving the texture and flavor of processed fruits and vegetables. At ARS, basic research on the nature of flavors is a continuing challenge, whether the fruits and vegetables are canned, frozen, or dehydrated like these tomatoes. Just add water and you've reconstituted tomato juice, superb in both texture and flavor. Exploring and exploiting the hidden potential of natural products ties in closely with the scientific advances of this swift-moving nuclear age. One of the most important peacetime uses of atomic energy is the use of radioactive tracers to study chemical reactions. The exact mechanism of hydrogenation is being studied by tracer techniques to find the best way to confer flavor stability in edible soybean oil. Carbon-14 and tritium are used to locate the place of reaction in the molecule. Agricultural chemists, physicists, biochemists, and chemical engineers work, too, on some of the problems posed by the atomic age. This dedicated young chemical engineer, a recent graduate student, found an outstanding community in which to pursue the field of his choice at an ARS lab. Within 18 months, he and his team, in cooperation with the AEC and the Public Health Service, helped solve a vital space-age problem, 
a standby process for the removal of radionuclides from milk in the event of nuclear accident or disaster. The process, ion exchange. Developed over half a century ago, utilized in many different ways, ion exchange is still part of the pool of fundamental research on which science constantly draws. This is the original lab model in operation. The tool to remove the radiostrontium from milk? A resin, a product of modern day organic chemistry, widely manufactured by industry. A polystyrene which attracts and holds radiostrontium. Here is a breakthrough of the past, applied to a problem of the present by talented young ARS chemists and chemical engineers and solved within the period of a year and a half. This pilot plant continuous contactor removes radionuclides from milk without affecting its stability, flavor, or nutritional values. Plant scale engineering is underway now, offering industry a standby process which will be available if it's ever needed. And work still goes on at the same laboratory on the removal of other unstable isotopes, like barium, cesium, if the day ever comes when it's deemed necessary. For ARS scientists constantly look toward new horizons, new dimensions in living, as the speed of the times in which we live brings us swiftly to those horizons, passes them, and offers other challenges. To the chemists, biochemists, chemical engineers of ARS, the challenges of nature's renewable bounty are a daily stimulus. In pioneer labs, in utilization labs from one end of the country to another, they constantly explore the chemistry of nature. They investigate every plant substance, searching relentlessly for new types of properties which can be transformed to satisfy human needs. If you are a chemist, a biochemist, a microbial chemist, a chemical engineer, consider the many advantages of a challenging career with the Agricultural Research Service of the U.S. Department of Agriculture. <laughs>